Funding for this program was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and viewers like you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on this special edition of From Terrace, A Changing America, Building a 21st Century Workforce. The Bridge of Southern New Mexico coordinated the series, and you'll find a lot more information at NewMexicoTrueTalent.org. Today's focus, science, technology, engineering, and math, skills critical to our national defense. If you've driven east along Highway 70 past Las Cruces, you've likely seen the White Sands Missile Range. But what testing takes place there? Michael Hernandez reports. Occupying more than two million acres of land across five southern New Mexico counties, White Sands Missile Range is the Department of Defense's largest land-based test range facility. The site conducts weapon systems testing for all branches of the military, as well as allied countries and private industries. Originally founded in 1945 as White Sands Proving Ground, the missile range is home to the Army's first rocket launch complex, as well as the Trinity site where the first nuclear test was conducted as part of the Manhattan Project during World War II, ushering in the atomic age. U.S. Army Colonel David Cheney II assumed command of the White Sands Test Center in June. Cheney says the test center employs a wide variety of people, doing everything from mining asteroids for water and rocket fuel to conducting pad abort tests that evaluate how well a launch escape system protects the crew of a spacecraft in an emergency. We have scientists here, we have all kinds of engineers, every flavor of engineering is used here at White Sands Missile Range. We also rely heavily on uh, technicians and folks that aren't engineers or maybe don't have a graduate degree or even an undergraduate degree but are very technically savvy and maybe went to tech school and they're helping integrate new equipment onto vehicles and doing modifications. So we, we have, it really runs the gamut. Engineers like test officer Henry Cedillo, who works with customers looking to conduct tests at the site. Cedillo says after stints at NMSU and in the workforce, he attended Doniana Community College to pursue an associate's degree in electronic technology and worked as a student co-op at White Sands. I was going for my degree but I, I wasn't sure of where it was going to lead me. I knew what I wanted to do, and I, I kind of was leaning towards running my own business at one time. But then when I started to work at White Sands, I started to realize there was more out there than just electronics. After finishing community college, Cidio returned to NMSU to continue his education, earning a bachelor's degree in engineering technology and master's in industrial engineering. He says that education has allowed him to grow as an employee in his work with missiles. For uh, such missile systems like the Patriot system, where it's a missile air defense system, we are able to shoot down enemy targets, enemy missiles, enemy airplanes, and that is directly affecting our soldiers out on field. Colonel Cheney says the test center is also refocusing its efforts toward testing weapons like directed energy, which use high-powered microwaves or lasers to take down enemy targets. You really need direct energy to be able to address some of those threats because they're very inexpensive, like the Katusha rockets we're facing in Afghanistan. Those don't cost very much, and they can launch a whole bunch of those at us in a ripple. And you need a technology that can address those threats very quickly and accurately and move on to the next threat. And that's what direct energy gives. That, that's the potential. White Sands employs more than 2,300 military and civilian personnel, along with more than 2,600 contractors at the site. As one of the region's largest employers, the missile range has a daily estimated economic impact of more than $3 million on employment and nearly $5 million on spending in the region. Colonel Cheney has been decorated with numerous awards and medals, including the Bronze Star. But he says beginning his military career with more education in science, technology, engineering, and math would have helped. I didn't have the STEM background that I needed. Uh, I was an aviator, um, had a business degree from college, and 
then got into aviation maintenance, and then later aviation logistics. And then the Army asked me, to, hey, we want you to do something totally different and figure out how to do Army acquisition work. And that's when I got a master's that was a little more technical. It would have been a lot easier road for me. I had to work really hard to get here, and it would have been a lot easier for me if I'd have had that STEM background. As a commander, Colonel Cheney says he values a workforce that understands the success of each mission depends on the entire range working as a team. They're that large and there are that many, that many different complexities to the test and it requires hundreds of people out there throughout the test event. And it's everything from fuel delivery people to people that help secure the, the range from people that might be driving through the roads or setting up roadblocks or launching the missile, launching the targets, uh, making sure the power, the communications, the network systems are all working. I mean, everybody's important. White Sands officials say testing weapon systems to ensure they work as intended is helping secure the safety of every soldier, sailor, airman, and Marine on the battlefront. For KRWG Public Media, I'm Michael Hernandez. Some examples there of building the workforce in our community. We continue the discussion with Brigadier General Greg Brady of White Sands Missile Range, Patty Lucero from Trax International, and Patricia Sullivan from the New Mexico State University College of Engineering. Our panel was coordinated by the Bridge of Southern New Mexico, and more information is available online at New Mexico True Talent. Org. Thank you all for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you having for us. General Brady, I want to start with you. We saw in that story uh, just a taste of the amazing array of uh, positions that are available to support our national defense. I, I want to get a sense of this in terms of the uh, civilian role. A lot of folks, when they think about a, a military installation, they only think about the military, but as we saw in that report. There are thousands of folks who work at White Sands. Many of them are contractors or civilians. Uh, tell me about how civilians support the base mich mission at White Sands. Well, thank you, Fred, for being here. And uh, when you talk about supporting the base, what our primary mission is, and it's all about readiness. That's the number one priority in the Army right now. And so the role at White Sands for our civilians is we have civilians that do different missions, as you saw uh, Colonel Dave Cheney, which is our White Sands Test Commander, highlight. Um, especially, you know, as our focus today is on science, technology, uh, engineering, and mathematics. But we also have other opportunities at White Sands that are just as critical to sustain these uh, tests that we highlighted today, uh, specifically in the you know, Department of Emergency Services. We actually also have a hospital out at White Sands Missile Range. So definitely civ civilians with uh, backgrounds in uh, Healthcare are absolutely critical, but also on the logistics piece. Now, White Sands Missile Range, you know, what is so unique about it is one of the largest ranges fully instrumented in the Department of Defense, 2.2 million acres. And so put that in perspective, you could actually fit the state of Rhode Island and Delaware and still have additional room. Wow. So it gives you an idea of the scope, 100 miles long by 40 miles wide. So. With that kind of capacity, a lot of people are needed to work uh, at White Sands. Yeah, and some of those people are with us today. Patty, I know that uh, you, your company, Trax, is working at White Sands. Give us a sense of the role of Trax uh, at the facility. Well, we're, uh, we support at White Sands Missile Range as their mission support uh, services contractor, uh, but the role that we also have is as the for the Department of Defense, uh, for the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense Test Resource Management Center, these STEM initiatives. And what the mission of the TRMC, and we talk a lot in acronyms, um, is, is to uh, plan and ensure the adequacy of the major range test facility bases, White Sands being one of the premier test facility bases for, for, uh, for the department. And that is to assess the test and evaluation infrastructure, the adequacy, the, the budgets to sustain those, to look at the instrumentation, and look across all the other facility bases to ensure that we are learning the best practices. Okay, uh, so to prepare employees to work uh, at tracks or other uh, firms, give us a sense of the kind of 
a range of skills and education needed to support that workforce. So what we're trying to do is develop a persistent pipeline to address the attrition in the Department of Defense and to address the technologies and capabilities needed. And so we're looking at looking at uh, primarily uh, graduate, as, as, as the general stated, there's a lot of disciplines, but we're looking at those capabilities, diversity of thought. Uh, we have a very seasoned workforce, and, and statistics have shown, the TRMC did a study uh, recently, that 38.2% of the workforce is eligible for retirement within the next ah, five years. so more and more folks will be needed. Yeah. Absolutely, so we're looking at uh, engineers, computer scientists, programmers, software engineering, uh, we're looking at physicists, statisticians, uh, to, to condense that data. There's massive amounts of data that need to be condensed and, and to make some analysis out of that data that they're capturing as they're testing and they're utilizing this instrumentation. Okay, and Patricia, I know New Mexico State uh, University plays a big role in training this workforce. Give us a sense of that. Well, we work closely with our partners at White Sands. Uh, we have a variety of programs that we work with and primarily trying to get students trained to fit into the real world um, on, on day one. So we work closely with our faculty in terms of getting projects that are um, real world oriented. So our capstone projects, a lot of them offered by uh, different groups out at White Sands. So they get an opportunity to work in teams, they get an opportunity to deal with technologies that are emerging as well as things that they've learned in the classroom. So it gives them an opportunity to get involved in things that they're gonna see real life uh, once they graduate. We also work with our, our, our teachers in the public schools and we try to get them uh, understanding the pipeline. So we can't just wait till they get to the university, we've gotta build the pipeline all the way from preschool actually. Yeah, yeah, it's, you've gotta start early and we, I've been glad that on a variety of these programs, we've been able to emphasize that and some of the opportunities that are out there in our community for young people to prepare uh, for the future and to help sustain White Sands and other facilities. Uh, General Brady, uh, Patricia mentioned the, that they, there is a connection between New Mexico State and White Sands and also K-12. Uh, that's one example of and an institution in our community uh, having a connection to support this workforce. What opportunities do you see for other connections in our community uh, that can ensure that we do have this workforce pipeline in the future? Well, thanks for bringing it up, Fred, and, and Patricia is exactly right. And, so, and Patty highlighted it as well. You talk about a workforce uh, that is retirement eligible. And so, you know, back to writing this, how do we ensure that we have the right people with the right skills to conduct these missions? Because as you know, uh, right now our focus is on the modernization of the United States Army. And as the Secretary of the Army highlighted, we're in a renaissance right now. And in order to reinvigorate some of these activities as we get into this new era, we've got to focus on the personnel. People are our greatest asset in the United States Army. And with the people, what we're doing is we're also partnering. You've heard a lot during the video today about a team of teams. So now we have a team of teams on White Sands, but also with the surrounding communities, whether Alamogordo, Las Cruces, and El Paso. And one of the areas I like to highlight is, uh, you know, as we talked about, you know, uh, Patricia uh, uh, highlighted the, you know, down to preschool. Well, actually, we're volunteering. We have volunteers set up in a program called the Gains in Education uh, for math and science, where we are, we have volunteers, you know, these same people that work out White Sands with all this experience are given back to the community, selfless service. And what we're doing is we are providing opportunities for our middle school students. We had 32, we started in 2015, uh, getting opportunity for like hands-on demonstrations, doing different modules, working with robotics. It's become so popular that we now have had to expand the program to two one-week sessions this summer, while it was previously just one. So it gives you an idea of how much interest is right out there in the community. But we haven't stopped there. We're also focused in the high school now, hmm. with the Army's research laboratories, which falls under the Army's future command. And within this high school students, uh, they are, have the opportunity, once again, to, you know, to follow on some of these subjects, but getting more into like directed energy, into lasers, computer science. Because these are the type of uh, 
you know, people that we're looking for in the future to work out at White Sands Missile Range. I'm so glad that you talked about that because, you know, we, we can all think back to being in uh, middle school, high school, and that opportunity to be exposed to possible careers, even if you don't take up the career, it may encourage you to really pay attention to your studies to think, well, that might be an opportunity for me, right? Oh, absolutely, Fred. And, and so even beyond uh, the middle school and in high school activities, we've reached out uh, with Patricia, and for the first time we're gonna host the uh, White Sands Missile Range Day on 30 January. It's the first time that we're gonna bring a lot of the leaders within White Sands to the campus here at New Mexico State University. That's great. And so we'll be able to help, you know, in areas like USA Jobs, so how to apply, um, what areas, you know, what are we looking at, you know, from your resume and what you're doing, but to give you those opportunities. Mm -hmm. and, and I would even say for the future, um, if you cannot make that event on 30 uh, January, we also will be attending the career fair, which is just about a week later. I believe, 6 February, is that correct? And, uh, and so, so two different opportunities where we'll be out there to represent White Sands Missile Range and, the act, and, and what is possible. Okay, I know businesses have a, a role in this too. Patty, give us an idea of how Traxxas has helped to so build how we, a talent pipeline. So how we supplement and partner mm -hmm. with White Sands Missile Range and other MRTFBs across the United States is to partner with the installations and also uh, address and put, uh, we have a 10 week STEM internship program funded completely by the Department of Defense TR, Test Resource Management Center. Mm -hmm. And we partner with academia. We look at their uh, technology focus areas and we look at the mission relevant type of issues and challenges that the installation may have. And we work very closely hand in hand with the government and the civilian workforce to develop those type of projects that students may actually apply the discipline and the curricul curriculum that they are learning at school to apply and get the hands on and promote the awareness of what there is behind the gates at White Sands. Yeah. Sometimes our neighbors don't have an idea what is available to them and how exciting it could be to work there. They have exposure to a whole lot and it's for the national defense. So they have meaningful work and jobs out there. So we work with, with very closely with, with White Sands uh, leadership and the government and the different directors within the tenants and the tenants there uh, such as the Center for Countermeasures to work for a, uh, and expose students uh, in Coincidentally, when this pilot program started at White Sands and FY13, we had 66 applicants. They became our ambassadors with the partnering universities. This year, during the first semester that we recruited, we had 154 applicants wanting to come and wow. work at White Sands. And I, and I would imagine, Patty, correct me if I'm wrong, that this is uh, a great opportunity for your company as well because it's probably a way that you develop a pool for potential future employees, right? Absolutely. Yeah. This program is such that it, the database is developed to, and the hope is that students will become so interested as and, and select the Department of Defense as a career path upon graduation that they will either get hired as a government civilian employee and enter the civil workforce uh, or become a contractor that supports these installations. Uh, it, it just, it, it, the wealth and the empowerment uh, of what they do and to see that their work is so meaningful yeah. for our defense and our security is, is uh, it's a lot, of, a lot of joy and empowerment for these students. Okay, Patricia, we've talked a lot about uh, students uh, and White Sands. Give us, give us a sense too of how uh, NMSU plays a role in helping uh, new businesses that can complement the mission of White Sands? So we have a variety of programs at New Mexico State. Um, some of them intentional, some of them just spur out and happen and we find out about them. So we've had several companies that have spun out of uh, Physical Sciences Lab, uh, former employees there that have worked uh, as contractors and now they've gone out and started their own businesses. But intentionally, New Mexico State has Arrowhead Center. And so Arrowhead Center works very closely with uh, individuals and businesses to try and help them put their business plans together. Uh, they work with faculty across campus to evaluate technology 
to actually make sure it's technology ready for market as opposed to still in the laboratory stage. So I think uh, having Arrowhead Center on campus is a real asset uh, and a lot of universities across the country are looking at what we're doing at New Mexico State as a model. Certainly who, uh, people who watch uh, this program, other public TV programs, or listen to public radio have probably heard of the Arrowhead Center and they've heard of this as kind of an incubator for businesses, not just in uh, the defense industries, but in all sorts of different uh, fields. Do you see this as being something that will continue to grow at, at New Mexico State? Because we know there are uh, many, many universities around the country that are trying to uh, encourage this as part of a, of a, a real economic development model uh, and a, a way that students get experience, but also a way that the university can help boost the overall economy of, of the area. So I see it as a permanent fixture at New Mexico State University, yeah. and primarily because Arrowhead um, has and New Mexico State in general are very good at working with diverse populations to move things forward. So it's not just a business startup of uh, people from high end or, or high wealth uh, backgrounds. It's it's for anyone with a great idea that wants to move it forward. So I think. Uh, having the opportunity to work with Arrowhead, it doesn't matter what your background is. If you have a technology, you're interested in moving a business forward, they've got the resources to help you. So I think having access is important. Yeah, okay. General Brady, we saw in that uh, story at the beginning of our broadcast that uh, White Sands affects you whether you work there or not because it has an enormous economic impact on the entire region. No, absolutely, Fred. You, know, you saw the, the statistics there, especially, you know, almost over $4 million, um, you know, the you know, daily impact, you know, and that was based off of the 2015 Joint Land Use Study. Uh, but this economic impact is, I definitely see the workload also increasing. This is why we have opportunities out there to work. Um, just in uh, May of 2018, the Army's established its new modernization strategy. And there are six critical areas with this modernization strategy because what this has done is to ensure that the Army uh, deploys its soldiers, makes them more lethal, especially our soldiers and our units, and to bring them back safely. And what we do with this developmental testing and experimentation out of White Sands, we're going to be focusing on two critical areas. That is air and missile defense and long-range precision fires. And you saw some of those examples in the video. And we're actually leading some of these efforts for the future capabilities because right now, what we have to do is be able to stay ahead of our adversaries. That's a part about being ready. And staying ahead of our adversaries, we've got to have the best you know, capabilities. We have to accelerate some of these capabilities we thought were you know, way down the road. And so we're now starting to invest in those within hypersonics, directed energy, autonomous swarming. And we're also getting back to our space routes, as you saw on the video there as well. Uh, we're participating in the commercial crew program with NASA, where actually you'll be launching a rocket um, from U.S. soil, docking with the International Space Station, and then the caps will be coming back to land at White Sands Missile Range, back on U.S. soil. I mean, so we're just excited about the future. <laughs> when asked, so when you see our moniker, you know, White Sands Missile Range, you know, it's America's birthplace for missile and space activities. Yeah. So we're getting back to our roots on that. Patty, I, I'm guessing that this makes r recruiting in some ways a little bit easier, that this is such an exciting and dynamic field. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the students and what we've done uh, uh, with the focus is to work with partnering universities, uh, specifically close to these these installations, because we feel that the workforce. I think in White Sands, you have the primary the workforce is either NMSU, UTEP, New Mexico Tech University, uh, to again like promote that awareness of the, of the DoD and also the economic development uh, impact to keeping those bright students here in the region. Absolutely. To address uh, careers, technology that they probably don't exist yet, but are very necessary. Yeah. So the National Defense Strategy has their priorities of what what is needed. And also we collaborate very closely with NMSU, um, with, with uh, White Sands, is what do we need to help you to be able to posture you to continue being that premier major range test facility base yeah. to and address I, those threats. And I guess, uh, Patricia, this emphasizes the 
it, such an important role of, of universities, including New Mexico State, to educate a workforce for the future that can be adaptable, that can, mm -hmm. can keep up with these changes. We've heard about this future. It's just amazing to think about. So our, a lot of what we do uh, in the K through 12 um, pipeline uh, is really looking at access to students from diverse populations. So making sure that everyone has an opportunity to get involved in STEM. If you look at the national st statistics, a lot of students from um, socioeconomic backgrounds, um, diverse populations, don't have access to the STEM activities. So New Mexico State is very good at bridging the gap. Uh, one of the things we did, a, uh, we, were, we were able to do with the help of the TRACS group, is we brought the Tech Center to the College of Education. It's actually a flight simulation uh, facility and we're working with the public schools. We actually are running, I believe, the eighth grade school uh, groups through as part of their curriculum. We also use it in our outreach programs in the College of Engineering. So we're really exposing kids, letting them come into a facility that looks like what they'll see in the real world. And they get to do things. They get to explore. They get to uh, focus on things. And a lot of what we focus on is making people s realize they can be a part of something. It's, it's no longer so far out that you can't be involved. It's uh, working on self-efficacy and, and letting people think, I can do this. Yeah. That's great. And again, uh, General Brady, we've got a, an open house uh, coming uh, out at the university, right? We do. And yeah. we're looking forward to that on the 30th of uh, January. And also being part of the career fair. Uh, Patricia has us down for that as well on 6th February. Um, but, you know, I've, I focused a lot on the university as well. And, and I back to the video when you saw Henry Cedillo as someone who was you know, a graduate from Donya Anya Community College. My first... Uh, we can command. I actually met with uh, Ms. Tracy Bryant from the Southern Bridge of New Mexico, her mm -hmm. group, and met with our team to find out, hey, how do, what opportunities also are out there besides having, you know, a gra undergraduate or a graduate degree, a associate's degree of engineering, there are opportunities at White Sands. So many, so many. I Absolutely. And that's been a great part of this series. General Brady, Patty, Patricia, thank you all for joining us. This has been really thank interesting. You. Thank, Thank you, Fred. You. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much at home as well for joining us for this Frontera special, Building a 21st Century Workforce. There is a lot more information for you online. Check out the Bridge of Southern New Mexico at NewMexicoTrueTalent.org. Have a great week. Funding for this program was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and viewers like you. Thank you.